past Grace is going to show you how we got this look and who our very first episode is about. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel and happy new year. This is a very exciting video because we're actually starting a brand new series on this channel. It's called Magical Makeup Mondays. This is where I sit down with you, I get ready for my day, and we talk about something magical. It could be Disney, Universal, maybe it could be completely unrelated to the two. I don't know, we'll see where this series takes us. Full disclosure, I'm not a makeup artist. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning, I'm gonna learn. But I do love makeup and I love putting it on. So this is just for you and me to get ready for our days together. I'll leave everything linked down below. If you like this new series and you enjoy while you're watching, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a Magical Makeup Monday again. So when I was first deciding on what to do for this series, I was wondering like what I should do for the first episode and I decided that one name really came to mind and that name was Walt Disney. I figured it was kind of hard to do a series that's like magical and whimsical without kind of starting with his story. Disney has become just a household name. It's not every day where you come across someone who hasn't heard of the Disney companies or a movie or something related to the Walt Disney World. But how did this kind of all come to be? Well, our story first begins on December 1st, 1901, when Walter Elias Disney was born in Chicago, Illinois. Walt was one of five children, four boys and one girl. Walt was the fifth son though. <laughs> Walt's dad was a carpenter, a farmer, and a building contractor. Walt's mom was a public school teacher. Just five years after Walt was born, the family actually moved to Marceline, Missouri. It's said that Marceline was actually the inspiration for Main Street USA that we know and love in the parks today. I know whenever I work down Main Street USA, I just get like this crazy like feeling of nostalgia and magic and I don't know there's just something very special about Main Street USA any time of year. Walt would end up growing up on a farm and at the small age of five he discovered that he really loved drawing. Well another four years goes by and Walt's dad actually has to sell the farm in Marceline due to some health issues. One year later the Disney's packed everything up and moved to Kansas City, Missouri. Here, Walt was a paper boy and discovered his second love, which was movies. Just six years later, Walt and the Disney family ended up moving yet again, but this time they go back to their roots, to Chicago. It's here in Chicago that Walt actually ends up enrolling himself in the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts in efforts to pursue his dreams. However, the pursuit was put on pause shortly after as Walt volunteered to serve as an ambulance driver for the American Red Corps during World War I in France and Germany. In fact, Walt actually lied about his age to get into the ambulance corps. Nevertheless, one short year later, Walt makes his triumphant return and gets a job at an art studio for a whopping $50 a month. Today, that's roughly $899 a month. I don't know about you, but here in New York, very hard to live off of $899 a month. So you go Walt. <laughs> anyway, in 1920, Walt meets a man named Ub Iwerks. The two of them were like two peas in a pod and they formed a company together, but sadly it fails after just one month. In fact, the pair got a job at Kansas City Slide Company and here is where they discovered the wonderful world of animation. While working with KC, Walt decides to start his own side hustle and create a Newman Laughograms, which produces advertising and story cartoons. Just two years later, Walt incorporates Laughograms with $15,000 from investors, which is roughly around $240, no, $257,000 today. Sounds like a lot of money, except the venture also fails and goes bankrupt within the next year. Walt then decides he's going to set off to Hollywood with barely any money, his brother Roy, and just a dream. 
Walt and Roy formed Disney Brothers Studios less than one year after Laughagrams goes bankrupt. Remember of? Yeah, they bring him on the team along with a woman named Lillian Bounds who they bring on as an anchor. Well, one year later, Walt marries Lillian. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> Things for Walt are really starting to look up. The brothers rename the studios Walt Disney Studios and move into a new building on Hyperion Ave. In 1927, a film distributor contacts Walt Disney Studios to create animations based on a character named Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Guess what? He was a huge hit! So much so that Walt needed a bigger budget to continue with his great success. Unfortunately, not only did the distributor own the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, they also attempted to take over Walt Disney Studios completely. Walt was basically left with no choice but to abandon his little rabbit friend. As we've seen by now, not much was going to stop Walt from chasing his dreams, and this was no exception. In 1928, Walt created Mortimer Mouse. Yep, that's right, Mortimer. <laughs> his wife Lillian pushed him for the name to be changed, and that's Mortimer then became the one and only Mickey Mouse. In 1928, Steamboat Willie was produced, which was revolutionary in the world of animation. It was the first cartoon that synchronized sound and animation together. A star, a little mouse star was born. How about this for a fun fact? Walt Disney actually first voiced Mickey Mouse and was the voice of Mickey for over for about 20 years. Mickey was an overnight success. Within three years, the Mickey Mouse membership passed 1 million people. I think it's safe to say the whole nation loved this little mouse. In 1932, Walt acquires exclusive rights to the use of three strip Technicolor and puts it to use almost immediately. In 1933, Disney produced a short you've probably heard of called The Three Little Pigs. <laughs> the short was released during the Great Depression and was a massive hit. In 1937, due to a developed sophisticated multi-plane camera, Walt Disney Studios releases their first feature-length video, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I don't know about you, but I love Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I used to love it as a kid, but even now as a grown-up, like, I still love it. It's up there are my favorite movies, but it's not my favorite movie. <laughs> Of course, Snow goes on to be a major success. She even wins an Oscar. Pretty good. <laughs> One year after Snow is released, Disney buys a, a, a 50 acre lot in Burbank, California for a new studio. This studio produces a series of movies, most of which don't do well. <laughs> Pinocchio, Fantasia were not very successful at the time. Dumbo, he did all right. And then Bambi is released and also mm, does not do so well. If that were not enough, in 1941, Disney would face yet another major setback. The Disney animators go on strike. They wanted to unionize. I mean, we see it all the time today too. So interesting that history is kind of repeating itself again. The majority of the top animator animators end up resigning. In 1944, Disney re-releases Snow White once again. Major hit. In 1948, Walt goes to a railroad fair in Chicago. He also decides to create a railroad for his own home. Walt would go on to construct an elaborate model train set as a way to unwind and de-stress. He always had a passion for trains, but this kind of brought it to life in his own home. Nearly 13 years after Snow White's major blockbuster success, Cinderella was born. Now Cindy, she becomes the next big hit. In 1953, Walt creates Buena Vista Film Distribution Company. One short year later, Disney signs a contract with ABC to produce a one hour special in exchange for a 500K investment from ABC in a little park we know as Disneyland. 500K? Sounds like a lot of money, but if you actually were to put it in today's money, it would actually be $5.5 million. Someone call Shark Tank. <laughs> so 
So in 1954, Walt buys 244 acres of land in Anaheim, California. And now we know that to be Disneyland. Disneyland ends up opening in 1955. And within two months, the park receives over 1 million visitors. Another fun fact, Walt actually built his own private apartment. It's about 500 square feet, tiny little thing on the second floor of the fire station on main street usa you can actually if you go to disneyland and walk down you can look up and see there should be a light or a candle or something but some sort of light coming from the upstairs room that's where his apartment was and it's said to be that like that is the shining light of walt disney Anyway, fast forward to 1965, Walt Disney Studios also purchased land in a swamp in Orlando, Florida. Walt ended up having dreams of building his second park, which we now know today to be Walt Disney World. The following year, in early November of 1966, Walt was diagnosed with lung cancer and started to receive some treatment. It was, you know, like the cobalt treatment, but again, it's the 60s, so medicine wasn't as advanced as it was today. Unfortunately, on December 15th, 1966, Walt passes away due to complications from lung cancer. So sad, but he used to smoke a lot. Today, Walt is actually survived by his two daughters. So what I didn't mention while we're going through our timeline of things was that Walt actually had one biological daughter and one adopted daughter. His biological daughter's name is Diane and his adopted daughter's name is Sharon. Walt is also survived by his wife Lillian. Lillian goes on to live a long life and ends up passing away on December 16th, 1997. So actually not too long ago. I have one question. <laughs> Did Walt ever sleep? I mean this man honestly contributed so much not just to the parks and the movies that we know and love today but just to the world of animation and movies and the way we honestly grew a lot of kids grow up it's absolutely crazy to think about i mean i know i have my favorite disney movies my personal favorites are tangled and frozen which i feel like that's kind of a cop out actually i take that back my favorite movies are Tangled, Frozen, and then my OG favorite is Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. I have a lot. I think that's kind of cheating, but it's okay. We'll work on it. Comment down below. What is your favorite Walt Disney movie? Is it something in the Marvel Universe? Is it Pixar? Now that they acquired Pixar. What is your favorite thing? And that's the other thing. The Disney companies didn't die when Walt died. It lived on to show like amazing stories. They've acquired so many different movie IPs. There's Pixar, Star Wars, Marvel, six parks across the world. I can't even begin to imagine how many visitors at this point Walt Disney World alone sees in a year. Funny enough, I've only ever been to Walt Disney world in Florida and I've also been to Disneyland in Paris but it was only for a brief trip we didn't really go in the park you know we were just kind of went to dinner at the Disneyland Paris I think it was the hotel I'm pretty sure it was the hotel and we got to meet the characters it was a ton of fun I'm curious what is your favorite park and what park are you dying to go to I feel like I've learned so much about Walt and his life there's so many other things that like I couldn't mention just because the sake of his story would have been so long. But he actually also like created propaganda for the government during some wars. There's a bunch of movies and shorts that came out during that time that are so interesting to learn about. But I tried to stick to the base stick to the basics of what Walt did which was imagination and animation and his feature length movies that became hits. Well, some of them, I guess. I don't know, but I kind of like Dumbo and Bambi. <laughs> Comment down below if Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo or Bambi are up there on your list. I kind of like them though. I don't think they're my favorite, but I kind of like them. Well, anyway, friends, 
I hope you had fun getting ready with me today. I sure did. And I learned a ton about Walt Disney's life. What is one thing that you know about Walt that I didn't mention? Because there's so many. This man lived quite the amazing life. Or you could say what your favorite thing that is that you learned from this video. Well, thank you guys so much for getting ready with me today. I had a blast talking about Walt Disney and I had so much fun researching and learning about his life. He truly lived a really incredible life. This is the final look for today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a Magical Makeup Monday again. Until next time, friends, I hope you have a magical start to your week. Bye.